The key problem is the lack of diagnosis. So the cancer, the 100,000 that Richard Sullivan talks about, quite right, that's about my estimate too, are hidden. We can't find them. We don't know who they are. They don't even know they've got cancer. They're waiting. They're part of the 6 million people waiting for a surgery, waiting for a scan, waiting for a biopsy. We've got to get them through. We've got to get everybody through really quickly. And we can do it if we put the same imagination we put to the vaccine program in Britain. So the way through, map out where we've got the facilities for endoscopy, for biopsy, for CT, for MR scanning, and work out how to double the productivity. Pay, no time to build new machines, no time to, to hire new staff. We've got to use what we've got. We've got to incentivize the staff, make the map, and work out at a local level how to double the output, double the throughput. People don't mind going at 8 o'clock at night for a scan. I wouldn't mind. You wouldn't mind. I'd go at midnight if I could get it the next day rather than wait two months. That's the attitude we've got to take. It's, as Sajid Javid said, it's a war on cancer. We've got to use wartime production line, really work out how to maximise the efficiency of what we're doing. And Carol Sokol, we did exactly that, didn't we, for the booster program over Christmas, and this could actually save many more lives. It would. It would really save more lives. The problem with cancer, it doesn't stop. So the longer you wait, the more it spreads. The more it spreads, the more difficult it is to treat, the less good the results. So doing something that catches cancer when it's confined to a single organ before it spreads, a process we call metastasis, change of place, is the key to getting better results. Before COVID, Britain was already behind the European average for some of the common cancers. With COVID, we're far behind. We've just got to catch up. That's why I say let's do it in the next month. We haven't got long to do this. If we do it in the next month, we'll save more lives than died from COVID over the last two years. Carol Sikora, of course, you warned of this at the very start of lockdown. You said this would be the consequence. How angry are you, Carol, that the government didn't listen to you? I'm very across for the whole thing. I mean, it is outrageous, really. It was so predictable. My colleagues could see it coming. We all talked about it in the coffee rooms around Britain's hospitals, and yet nothing was done. Uh, we were obsessed with COVID. We, even before Christmas, we talked about this, Dan. We talked about the fact that can, would Christmas be cancelled? Cancelling Christmas and the lockdown that comes with it leads to secondary consequences, which include the fear of patients. We've got this horrible fear of people that have clear cancer-related symptoms not going forward for treatment. Uh, and, and instead, it's not so much the treatment facilities that are the problem, it's the diagnostic facilities, getting people out there, labelling them as cancer, and then getting on with their proper treatment.